Hey, Rebel Bankers, this is your host, Chris Noggle, and welcome back to the Real Estate Money School podcast. I'm really happy you guys are here, and I got an exciting topic to talk to you about that's incredibly relevant for what's happening right now. And just so everybody knows that's watching, right now we are in maybe month three and a half to month four of the COVID crisis. So a lot of people are calling this different things. Some people are saying this is a recession. Some people are saying this is an epidemic, a pandemic, whatever you're calling it, that's what's happening right now. And that's why this information is so relevant to each of you. But before we jump into today's topic, which is 401ks and employer sponsored retirement plans and why right now might not be the best time to put all your eggs in those baskets. But before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about you. I want to talk about your journey to becoming a rebel banker. And, you know, we talk about this every single time. You know, so many people are out there seeking knowledge. They're seeking the truth. They're seeking knowledge about how money really works. But the biggest problem is you can seek and seek and seek for all the knowledge you want because it's all out there, but you have to apply the knowledge. That's what matters. And that's what it's going to take for you to become a rebel banker. So you can start a couple different ways. You can grab a copy of my book, Mapping Out the Millionaire mystery. Or if you're looking for money, you can grab a copy of the private money guide. Both of these books are available in the link and you can get them for free. All you do is pay for shipping. So let's dive right into this topic because you know what? Out of the hundreds of calls we do every single month, one of the things that rings completely true is people are scared and people don't know what to do with their money. However, almost every single person I speak to is putting money into these employer-sponsored retirement plans, 401ks, 403bs, TSPs. They go by lots of different names, but we're just going to call them 401ks for today because that's the most commonly known. And we put our money into 401ks to, for obvious reasons. Number one, we get a tax deduction. So we're putting in pre-tax money. We get our paycheck, but the money has already gone into our 401k before it was taxed. So that's a positive. Second reason is it's easy. If you work for an employer and they offer a 401k, boom, you set it up and all of a sudden your money is getting put away into your retirement plan. Then that money can grow in the markets, right? So that's another thing that we look at as a positive. Well, you can pick from a basket of mutual funds. And in some cases, you'll have a, an option to do a brokerage account, which will give you the opportunity to invest directly into individual stocks, individual bonds, and ETFs. But that's far and few. But that's a positive, right? You can invest your money in the stock market to get better growth. We're going to come back to that one. So the other thing that you get is someday you basically will be able to retire, right? And sail off into the sunset and you're going to have all this money in your 401k that you then can start drawing off of. And what is the age? 59 and a half. That's the magic age when you can actually start taking your money from your 401k. So from 59 and a half to the day you graduate, Nice way of saying the day you die, you have the ability to take money from your 401k. Now, just, just in full transparency, I am not bashing 401ks. I'm not saying they're a bad place to put your money. I'm simply saying so many people need to look at other options for where some of their money should go because a lot of people have all of their eggs in one basket, employer-sponsored retirement plans. And you know what? Right now, in the midst of this coronavirus, pandemic, epidemic, or recession, and there's the big D word being thrown around by people like Ray Dalio and some other people that really know what they're talking about. And just so you know, what is the D word? The D word is depression. This looks a lot like the Great Depression and what it looked like right before the Great Depression happened. So you might ask yourself, you know, you might ask yourself, well, what would happen if this was the next depression? Or what would happen if this was the next great recession? Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's focus on what's relevant for today and what you should be doing today with your money. Now, again, this isn't for everybody. Some people are already diversified. Some people already are putting money in the right baskets and the 401k just serves as another one of those places that they're putting money. But the, the thing I want to talk about is why right now 
might be a very scary and dangerous place to have your money in 401ks. So let's, we talked about some of the positives, right? Pre-tax, okay, your money goes in pre-tax. You're not paying tax on that money. Okay. Number two, you get to invest in a basket of mutual funds. Maybe in some rare occasions, you have individual stocks, bonds, and ETFs that you can invest in. Then you basically have the ability to make it easy because every paycheck, the money just goes right into that 401k, out of sight, out of mind, you're psyched and you're happy because now you are putting money away for your retirement. But let's talk about the facts, really. What have we been taught to do our entire lives? What have we been taught to do with our money? Well, we just discussed a lot of it. We have been taught to give up control of our money. And that's exactly what we do because that's what we were taught to do from a very young age. I can remember back when I was a young lad, when I was a teenager, my grandma always would say to me, now, Chris, make sure you put money away into that 401k. When you start working for a company that offers you one of those retirement plans, you make sure you put money away because you don't want to be like us working into our retirement. You want to have money saved for retirement. You know, thanks, grandma you know, from, from up above. I appreciate the advice, but that advice comes from a place of not knowing how money works. Because giving up control of your money doesn't sound like a good thing, does it? And that's really what we're doing. By putting money in a 401k, we are physically giving up control of our most valuable dollars. Think about your money today, right? If, we, if I had a dollar bill in my hand, if I had a dollar bill, that dollar bill right now today is worth the most that it will ever be worth. Because you're, you think of it, uh, 20 years ago, how many candy bars could you have bought for $1? Well, the answer is more than you could have today. But we don't really think about that. We just think that we should give up control because, well, that's all we've, that's all we've ever known. And today, they just printed, the Fed just printed $2 trillion. I should do that thing. $2 trillion. I'm, I'm not good at acting that out from Austin Powers, but... $2 trillion just got printed out of thin air. Now, where does that money, that $2 trillion derive its value from? Well, let me tell you. Pull out your dollar bill from your wallet or your purse and look at it, and I want you to cut it in half. Maybe not in half, but at least cut a quarter of it off because that's where that $2 trillion gets its value. It steals its value from your current dollars. It's called inflation, folks. It's been around forever. It is nothing more than a hidden tax. You should read the book, Creature from Jekyll Island, and you'll learn all about what inflation really is. It's nothing more than a hidden tax. Every single day, your dollars are worth less. So why would we give up our good dollars today to get them back someday later? So that's the first thing. The first thing we do is we put our money in these employer-sponsored plans and we give up control. And if we want that money back or we need that money back, there's some serious consequences, isn't there? Well, if we take that money out pre-59 and a half, so if we take that money out as an early withdrawal, we are penalized. That's right. The IRS will penalize you 10% for an early withdrawal penalty because you took your money, your money, you took your money out a little too early because the government gave you the ability to get a tax deduction on that money. So therefore, that money needs to stay there until 59 and a half with a few exceptions. And those exceptions are just like I said, far and few. So we're not going to even go there. So now we can't take our money till 59 and a half. So what happens during that period of time? Well, let me tell you, hopefully your money grows in the market. But like right now and like 2008 and like the early 2000s and like the 90s and the 80s and every seven to 10 years, there is a market recession or a market correction. We go through these cyclical cycles, the ups and downs, the ebbs and the flows. And what a lot of people do is when the markets go down, they panic or out of sheer necessity like 2008, they take their money from their 401k defying everything that you should do with your invested dollars, which is take your money out low and then buy back in high. That's not what we're supposed to do. Aren't we supposed to buy low and then sell high to not lose money? But do we do that? No. We typically, for the average person, and I was an advisor for 16 years, I witnessed this happen at levels that you can't even imagine. People, because of emotion, because of overreaction, and because of fear, take their money out 
when the market goes down. That's when they take their money out. They move their money out of the market when the market's low. Not when the market's high, like you know it was back in February or like it is kind of right now because aren't we sort of at this little rebounded high point? We're not far off of the lows. But if you were to look at your statement, it won't really tell that story, will it? So if we're just under the highest point the, the market's ever been, because in March, the whole stock market crashed and then it slowly has climbed back on pure speculation. On, 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 on no real logical reason outside of speculation of the economy open, speculation of a coronavirus vaccine, speculation, speculation, hope, and, and why don't we just hope and pray, right? We'll hope and pray the stock market right up to the top. That sounds funny, but that's exactly what just happened. We hoped and prayed and the markets went up and that's not real. It's not based on fundamentals. It's not based on facts. It's based on speculation. And if you want your entire financial future to be based on speculation, well, then this is not the episode for you. But if you really want some more secure ways to think about it, then you should listen. Because here's the thing. We do things with our money that we would never, ever do with things that money buys. Think about it. We put our money into these 401ks to get that money back out someday later. How much later? Well, it depends on your age. Five years, 10 years, 15 years down the line, could be even 20 years. We put our money there and we can't take that money until then unless we pay a penalty. And what happens during that period of time, that 5, 10, 15, 20 year period? Well, hopefully the markets go up always. And if they just go up and up and up, our money goes up and up and up. But while our money's going up, What else is happening? Number one, our dollars are becoming weaker because of inflation. So our dollars are actually going down in value. So as that account grows, we are actually losing value. So it's almost like a give take. One's going up, the other one's going down. So we actually, our money has to work twice as hard to keep pace with inflation and beat inflation so that we actually have some money that is usable for retirement. And historically, we do. The stock market historically will beat inflation. However, once we then take that money out, we get, we get hit with taxes, don't we? So when we decide to take that money out at 59 and a half, don't we have to pay tax on that money? So that whole time, that 5, 10, 15, 20 year period, didn't we just compound the tax? Because do your taxes go up or do they go down? Seriously, think about it. Do they go up or do they go down? Well, most of you are thinking, well, let me think. My taxes go up. They always have gone up. As I make more money, my taxes go up. The government taxes me on more, but sometimes the government doesn't. They reduce your taxes. But if you keep making more, you keep going into a higher tax bracket. But you know what? Even if taxes don't go up, don't they just find more crap to tax us on? Drive down your streets and your throughways and your highways in your town. Do you go through any toll booths? Does it seem like there's more tolls or less, right? In Florida, there's no state income tax, but there's a toll booth every quarter mile. Folks, that's a tax. They just find more crap to tax us on, don't they? So we put our money away. We give up our good dollars today to be paid back with weaker dollars later. We give up our good dollars today to compound the taxes and take our money out at a higher tax rate. And we play this vicious game in the stock market, which some of us, many of us, take our money out when it goes down because we get so scared and our emotions kick in. That's the game. That's the game. And who wins? Is it you or Is it the institutions? Well, we already discussed that. You already gave up control. The institutions are the ones winning. They're making money on your money. Because last time I checked, mutual funds have fees, don't they? Yes, actually quite high. Okay. Stocks have commissions that you have to pay. If you're paying an advisor to manage your money, you're paying a fee. I used to get paid a fee. I didn't work for free. So all these things hit your money as it grows. So again, Let's go back to what I just said. We do things with our money. We would never do things with what money buys. Think about it. Would you ever go to the grocery store, buy a beautiful Italian loaf of bread, come home, put it in your freezer and close the freezer door and then wait five, 10 or 15 years. Then come back to that same freezer, open that freezer door, take out that loaf of bread and say, yum. Absolutely not. You wouldn't eat that freezer burn piece of bread. How about this? Would you ever buy a brand new car, a car that you're super excited about, and then wait five, 10, or 15 years to drive that car? Probably not. Would you ever buy your dream house that you and your spouse had been waiting for, but then just decide, eh, 
we're not going to move into that for 5, 10, or 15 years. No, you would never do any of those. However, that's what we do with our money. That's what we do. Why? Right now, in light of what's happening, in light of what happened in 2008, in light of what happened in early 2000s, every recessionary or, or correction period in the stock market, we ask ourselves some serious questions. Where is my money? Well, I just told you, you gave up control of it. You can't take it out without penalty. Somebody else is going to win. Somebody else has been winning the whole time. Somebody else has been making money on your retirement dollars the entire time. Whether you're making money or not, somebody's getting paid. Folks, I can only tell you the truth because this is the life I lived for 16 years. I retired as an advisor. I retired in 2018 and you know what? It might have been one of the best days of my life. Not because I didn't enjoy being an advisor. No, no, no. But because I simply took the rosy colored glasses off and I started to see the truth of what we really did. I'm not saying advisors don't do really good things. Advisors are great. They're much needed. But I'm just simply saying, now I can tell the truth. No disrespect to advisors. I, we need advisors. We have to have advisors. But sometimes you have to take control of your money and understand that no one, I mean, no one is going to care about your money more than you are. Seriously, like you might have the best advisor in the world, okay? That advisor might act like they care about your money so much, but do they care about your money more than you do? Do they care about your financial future more than you do? Do they care about your livelihood more than you do? Well, I doubt it because they have their own lives, their own problems, their own situations, okay? Their, their job is to manage your money, but are they watching it closely? Are they really caring about the fact that when the market goes down and you are on the brink of not being able to make your car payments, make your mortgage payments, put food on the table, pay for college education, are you the one who is stressed out more or is your advisor stressed out more? Point made. I'm simply saying sometimes we need to really look at what's going on. And we need to look at where and what we're doing with our money and make some really serious adjustments. Because if you're putting a ton of money in your retirement plan in hopes of having enough to retire someday, well, you should have started with how much do you have to put away to hit your retirement, then back it up and figure out what does that work out to be today and then say, okay, how much do I want to put in the 401k? How much do I want to put into IBC? How much do I want to put into my brokerage account? How much do I want to put into my checking and savings account? You should never just have all your money in one place, but yet so many people do. It's the reason there's about $44 trillion in employer-sponsored retirement plans, because that's where we've been taught to put our money. Wake up. Wake up and see what is really happening here. Now, if you get a match, if you get a match at your employer, that's great. Put in enough money into your 401k to get the match because that's free money. That's solid financial advice. Whatever they match, take advantage of all of it. Put in the money and get that match. However, the rest of it, maybe there's a better place. Maybe you should be in control of your money because think about this. Let, let's talk about what's going on right now. Okay, In the midst of the COVID, is there going to be some opportunities that are created out of this? Oh, you bet your butt there is. Okay, what kind of opportunities are going to come in light of a recessionary period like what we're going to? And maybe, maybe just the D word. I doubt that, but just let's, let's plan for the worst and hope for the best. Isn't that the better plan? Instead of planning for the best and hoping the worst never happens, that never plan, plays out very well. There's going to be a ton of opportunities because right now the market's at almost its high point. Okay, it's been ping-ponging around. It makes absolutely no sense. Absolutely no sense. If you know what I know about the stock market and about the markets in general, and you look at what's going on in the markets right now, you are literally scratching your head saying, man, this just doesn't make sense. This looks like a ginormous big illusion, a magic trick, a Houdini, if you will, because that's what it is, folks. It is manipulation at its finest hour. You should all watch the movie, The Big Short, because in 2008, if you think this is the first time that this kind of manipulation has happened, why don't you look back at The Big Short? Do you remember CMOs, collateralized mortgage, mortgage obligations, or mortgage-backed securities? Weren't those a big illusion? Isn't that what drove the entire markets and the economy in the world economy down to its knees in 2008? An illusion. 
of something that we all wanted to believe. And we were all taught to believe that these CMO, these mortgage-backed securities were all AAA rated or 93% AAA rated and they were full of just good mortgages. When in reality, we all, now I'm just talking about the past, in reality, they were garbage. They were junk bonds. They were not even as good as the paper written on them. And what happened? What happened back then? That's right. The whole market exploded and crashed down and it went, you know, 20% down, 30% down, 40% down, and some people lost even more. Do you realize the drawdown effect for a stock market, your losses? This is the thing that nobody really realizes. I'm just going to kind of bring you in on a little secret that we know. And, you know, see, it's called the drawdown effect. That's all it is. And here's what it means. It means that if you lose 10%, on your stocks. You have to make 11% just to get back your 10. Eh, no big deal. But if you lose 20% on your stocks and your investments, you have to make 25% just to get back the 20 that you lost. This is where it gets really fun, so stay with me. If you lose 30%, you have to make 43% just to get back your 30 that you lost. And if you lose 50%, you have to make 100% just to get back the 50% you lost. This is why it never feels like your account comes back as fast as the stock market does. It's called the drawdown effect. And if you lose 100%, well, you're broke. So I don't mean to like smile and laugh about this, but folks, every one of us needs to wake up and smell the coffee or the roses. And why do I say the coffee and the roses? Well, because I like coffee. And we need to really start realizing what's going on here. I suggest you start looking at what you're doing with your money and start focusing on how you can get back control of some of your money. Now, I'm not saying stop putting money in the 401k. Clearly, no. Put money in your 401k up to the match. Take the difference that you were putting in and let's maybe find a better way. Consult with your CPA and your accountants to make sure that there's not a huge tax benefit for you putting money in these employer-sponsored plans, but that's for you to decide. I'm simply trying to get you to start thinking about what's really going on here and about what you're really doing with your money because these are the things that you need to start looking at. While these opportunities start to present themselves in light of this recessionary period we're in, you, if you don't have control of your money, how are you going to take advantage of opportunities? Well, let's think about it. Let's say Apple stock drops 40% tomorrow. Can you buy Apple stock? Are you in a liquid position? Do you have control of your money where you could buy positions of Apple? Well, if you say yes, then that's awesome. But if you said no, that's not so good. Okay, so there's one example. What if, you know, somebody calls you and they saw that you were a real estate investor and, and they want to sell you their house 30% lower than what it's valued at today because they have to get out of it or they're going to lose it. Are you in a position where you could take advantage of that opportunity? Are you in a position where you're in control of your money to take advantage of that? Even if it's not you paying 100% for the house, what if you went to the bank and the bank gave you 80%? Would you be able to come up with the other 20% plus closing costs? Are you in control of your money? I um, keep saying the same thing over and over and over again because it comes down to one thing. The wealthy, the wealthy people, they are in control of their money. And because they're in control of their money, they take advantage of opportunities more than anybody else. But the, most of us, like I was, I was never in control of my money because I just followed traditional financial knowledge. And I put my money in things like 401ks. And I left my money in the bank. I thought, oh my God, the more money I have in my bank account makes me rich. The person with the most money in the bank account is the next person who's going to be broke, just so you know, because your money's not working. You gave up control of your money, putting it in the bank. You gave up control of your money, putting it in the 401k. And do either one of those pay you passive income? Do either one of those send you a check every single month to your mailbox so that when you walk out there, you take your check out, you're like, sweet. I didn't have to work any harder for that money. Absolutely not. You see, what we need to focus on is something that Robert Kiyosaki talked about in Rich Dad, Poor Dad. If you have not read that book, well, read that book. That's a mandatory read. Then follow that up with Mapping Out the Millionaire Mystery. That's another good read. Not, not doing a, sh a shameless plug, but this book and Robert Kiyosaki's book and so many other books will change your life. They will change your mindset and then they will change your life only if you apply the knowledge. But so many of us just bury our head in the sand 
when times get tough. We look the other way. We pretend it's not even happening. And what happens to us when we do that? What happens when we take our eye off the prize? What is the prize? Your future, your financial future, your legacy. When we take our eye off of that, it goes away. It vanishes. We get run over. Okay, because the people that are watching their dreams, the people that are watching their goals and that are paying attention to them, laser focused on them and that have control of their money, they're the ones that run you over. Because if you want to bury your head in the sand right now, it is the worst possible thing you can do. And it also might just be that if you are not in control of your money, when these opportunities come, you're going to sit there and you're going to say to yourself, the one thing we've all said to ourselves, I shoulda, I coulda, I woulda. Why? Would you ever want to look back on your life and say, I should have, I could have, I would have. And I'm not just talking about your money. I should have went on that vacation. I, sh- I could have went on that vacation. I would have went on that vacation. I should have bought into that. I should have invested in Uber. I would have invested in Uber. Uber. I could have invested in Uber. What is the next Uber? You see, Uber was founded in light of the Great Recession. And so were so many other companies. Walt Disney founded Walt Disney World during the Great Depression. Sears, JC Penney's. I know those companies are bankrupt now, but those companies were founded during the recessionary period. There are so many companies that are created in light of hard times because hard times create strong men. That's a plug for one of my friends, Stefan Arneo, God rest his soul. He passed not long ago, but he was a mentor of mine and he wrote a book called Hard Times Create Strong Men. And in that book, it talks a lot about these things. We are entering hard times, folks. Don't think for one second that they're going to get better. Don't think that one second, for one second, all this money that you're putting away for retirement is guaranteed to be there someday. Well, hopefully it's guaranteed for you. Maybe it is. But for many of us, it's not. The future isn't here yet. The future isn't guaranteed. You know what really matters right now? I just said it. The now. Because the now is what you can control. So right now is the time you need to start really looking at your goals. What is your perfect day? What does it look like? What does every moment of your perfect day look like? And are you living that perfect day today? And if you're not, why don't we take that perfect day and reverse engineer it? What would it take to live your perfect day? How many calls do you have to make? What do you have to do? What do you have to sell? How many hours do you have to work? Back it all the way up to today, the now, when you can control it and start today. If your 401k Now that we just talked about that, doesn't seem like the best place to put all your money like you've been taught. Well, start questioning that. Start looking at that. Start looking at options and opportunities of where your money can go that puts you back in control of that. And don't let the financial companies and the banks make all the money on yours. And a lot of you don't know this, but you realize that banks make between 400 and 1300% on the money that we leave there. Now, I say this and people are like, no, banks don't do that. And then I get all these, these, these trolls, as I like to call them, commenting. Well, here's the facts. Go to BauerFinancial.com. Banks do indeed make that much. You can see it. It's factual. The profit and loss statements are right there in front of you. And it will show you that's how much banks make. How much does Wall Street make on your money? Everybody else has figured out how to make money on your money except for you. It's time to wake up. It's time to smell the roses. It's time to go out there and put yourself back in control, which leads me back to the reason I did this podcast. Are you in control of the money you're putting in your 401ks? That's for you to answer. Some of you will have different answers. Some of you are saying the 401k is the best option for my money. Great. And it might just be that. But I'm just saying that is the conventional financial wisdom that we are given and it is not the right wisdom for everybody because we've been being taught a huge lie our whole lives. And what is happening right now in the stock market, you will see, is the big lie. It happened in 2008. It was an illusion. It's happening now. It's an illusion. How many of you are going to get caught up in this? And how many of you are going to seek the truth, are going to seek the answers, and are going to go out there and then start taking back control. It's not going to happen overnight. It starts with one day at a time, and it starts right now. So thank you all for joining me for this episode of the Real Estate Money School. I really appreciate all of you. And again, let's go back to your journey to becoming a rebel banker. It takes you taking action on knowledge. Don't just sit and listen to this and say, oh, that sounded cool. Wow, that gave me some great ideas. And then you just go off and you do nothing. Getting ahead requires you to take action. 
If you don't leap and you don't take action, nothing will change. It's no different than just putting your head in the sand. If you're not going to take action, we'll just put your head in the sand and then you'll get run over. But I don't think that's you. I think every single one of you watching this right now, you are the leaders. You may not know you're the leader, but now is the time to stand up and be the light in this darkness because people need you. People need to hear from you. They need to hear your story and they need to hear your story of how you are getting back control of your money. Without stories, without people's failures and people's journeys, none of us would know how to make our lives better. We learn through failing. And if you don't want to fail, learn through others' failures. I have failed so many times, which is why I can sit here and tell you this, because I've failed doing what I was taught to do. I've failed doing what I was taught to do as a high-level advisor. How can that be if I was the one at the top advising everybody? Why would I fail? Okay? That's the question you have to ask yourself. And that there are answers. You just need to seek those answers, and it starts right here and right now. Thank you all. Enjoy your day, and we'll see you on the next episode of The Real Estate Money School.